So you want to create a backrooms animation just like this for free. Well, guess what? I'm going to show you how to do it right now. And all the steps are completely free. If you have a decent computer and have Blender installed, you are in good shape for this video. First, you're going to open up Blender. I have the download link in the description and I've got version 3.4, although you can use the newest version if you'd like. And you're going to start with a new general file. Press X to delete the default cube, shift A to add another cube, because that is always how you start a Blender project. And to make things easier, I like to click on this part of the axis here, the X, so that I'm looking at the side view, G to move, Z to move on the Z axis, and move it up so that it is the bottom is touching this Y axis. So basically the bottom of the cube is right where the axis plane is, which makes things a lot easier. Now I'm going to align the camera to head height. So in order to do that, I'm going to shift A again, add a plane and press S to scale up a little bit so that it's under the camera. This is the camera right here, this little wireframe thing. And when you press the camera icon on the right here, it's going to switch to the camera view. Now I'm going to click this tiny arrow here up at the right, go to view and select lock camera to view. So now when I move my axis around, it moves the camera, which is this orange dotted line around with it. Now, while I'm still in the camera view, I'm going to press shift tilde, and that's gonna add this little cross in the middle. And now you'll be able to move the camera around with your mouse. And one last step while you're still in this mode is to click tab on your keyboard and you'll see the camera falls down. So now gravity is initialized in the scene and I can move around using my mouse. This is super cool. The point of this to start is to get the right head height. So when I go in here to this cube, uh, you can see that if I were to use this as the room, it's very small and the ceiling is quite close uh, to where my head is. So I'm going to click my left click on mouse, get out of this mode, click the camera icon to get out of that. And now I can see where my camera is. And if you can't see it, you can click up here on this x-ray button and you can see where it is and now i'm going to select the cube press s again to scale up and as i'm scaling up i want to make sure to go back here to the axis system go to the side view press gz and move up this cube so that it's on this uh, axis at the bottom you don't have to do this but it makes it a lot easier when you're adding new objects now when i unselect x-ray re-click the camera shift tilde and tab and I move around, I can see that the ceiling is higher and it looks a lot more like a room like this would. You can adjust this to your liking, but I'm going to click out of the camera view again and start working on the actual environment. The method that worked for my last Backrooms animation was building out all of the parts of the main structure from one singular cube. That means not adding multiple cubes for different parts of the room, but instead building it all out of one cube using edit mode. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'll start by deleting this plane with X because we don't need it anymore and selecting this cube and going up here to edit mode. Three on the keyboard selects faces. So when I move it around, it moves the whole face. We'll actually start with face select mode enabled. So I'm going to select one of the side faces. So let's say this side right here with left click and press E to extrude. And it's going to bring this side out as far as I want it to. When I go back into my camera view, you can see that it has started moving this thing out. And I actually want this ceiling to be a little shorter and you can make these adjustments as you go. So I'm gonna go out of the camera view. I'm going to select these two faces using face select mode so select one then shift select the other and then press gz and it's going to bring these bad boys down so when i go back to the camera view and click gz i can make the ceiling height nice and claustrophobic i'll click on the camera icon again to get out of it and we can start to see that our room is going to take shape nicely so now i'm going to go to this left side this panel to loop cut when I select that option, you can see when I move my mouse around, it's got different divisions that it can make. So I'm gonna hover my mouse around this area and left click and hold, and I can move this division wherever I'd like it. And I'm gonna move it so that it kind of keeps the width of the hallway constant. So around there, when I release it, it adds that new division. Now when I go back to the selection mode, click three to select faces and select this, 
it's become its own new face. And now when I click E to extrude, it can extrude like that. You can really play around with this to your heart's content. I'm gonna select this face, extrude a little out. Then I'm also going to go back to loop cut again, hit it right there, back to selection, faces, select this bad boy, extrude, and you can do this for as many hallways or sections as you'd like. And if you want to extrude diagonally, you can click E, Shift, Z, so everything but Z, and then you can move it around like this, and it'll stay on the same constant level on the Z axis, which is super helpful. Once again, extruding more, using a loop cut to cut through these. It's quite a simple process once you get used to it. Um, and it allows for a lot of complexity out of one cube that you wouldn't have expected. E to extrude, then back to selection, face select using three on the keyboard, selecting that, then extruding with E over and over and over. I'll leave this as my structure, it's nice and simple, and now I'm going to start working on the other aspects of the room that make this look more realistic and more backroomsy. The first thing I'm going to do is go back to the side view by clicking the red X on the axis here, and then going back to loop cut and hovering around until I get a line down the middle horizontally of my structure. Now I'm going to do the same thing, left click and hold, and bring this division all the way down to around foot height. So for me, this is a good width, and you can check once you've done it. I'm gonna release, and it's, it's there, and it has divided the whole structure along that horizontal line. I'm gonna go back to my camera, shift, tilde, and then tab to go back to gravity, and I can now explore my backrooms area already with my mouse. And it looks like that this is a pretty good height. These are called baseboards. What these will be are called baseboards. They're basically these things at the bottom of the walls in the back rooms that make them look a lot like the back rooms. I'm gonna left click to get out of this mouse camera view and click the camera icon to get out of that. And now I'm gonna zoom in to where I'm working on these so that I can start extruding each of these faces. It's a very similar process. I'm going to use the select tool and face select like we did before with three on the keyboard or up here clicking this button. And I'm going to individually select all of these little squares down here that go in one direction. So let's say I want to do all of them along the Y axis. So I'm going to go down here and I'm not gonna select these for right now. I'm going to select this face, this face, because they're all going in the same direction. This one, this one, shift click to select multiple. And this one, go back this way, see if we have any others. And you can use these tools as you're going. So this axis system, if you hold and drag, it'll help you move around the scene. This zooms in and out, this little magnifying glass tool, this hand moves around your view. So I'm gonna keep going along the ones on the same side that are going along the same axis. Uh, and this just makes things easier, but you can do these individually if you'd like, but I'm gonna make sure to select all of those. Okay, so now all of the ones on this side that are moving in this direction are selected. Now I'm gonna go back here and extrude with E this one face, and now it's extruding all of them. You can see the one back there is extruding as well. I'm gonna extrude it just enough that it sticks a little out. It doesn't have to be too far at all. Subtlety is often something you wanna shoot for in this case. Once I've extruded to the right level, which I'd say is right about there, I'm gonna click. And now I'm gonna go over here to the material properties window. I'm going to make a new material, name this one walls. And now add a second material using this plus button on the right here, new baseboard. And with these still selected, you wanna keep these selected, I'm going to click Assign. And I'm actually going to change the base color of this baseboard to a nice, let's say, brown color. When I go into the viewport shading window, you can see that these ones that I had selected are now a different color from the other walls. That's pretty nice. I'm now going to repeat this process a few more times for the other baseboard. So now I'm going to go this way. So basically uh, the X axis um, so that I can kind of build off of what I've done already. So I've got these two right here to start off with uh, and make sure to select this little piece that's part of this one. Um, and now I'm going to also select the rest of the ones that go this direction. So again, moving around the scene, I can see that this one 
is going along the x-axis as well. So I'm going to select that, continue over here to these walls, select those, select this one because it's right in line with the first one that we did. And then finally in this corridor, select this guy and zoom in here, this guy, this guy, and then this. So everything again in a line going along the X axis. And I'm gonna zoom in again to where I have one of them selected and E to extrude. And I'm gonna keep that width the same as I did on this side. And now same thing, click baseboard and assign. So now all of those ones that I just moved uh, are in the right position and they are a different color. So now when I go back into camera, shift tilde and tab, when I move around, I can see these baseboards are starting to come together very nicely. This process, you're gonna do a total of four times. We did it twice to get this side of the wall and this side of the wall done. And now we need this side done and the other one on this side. It's just all of the ones going in the same direction to help speed up the process. So now I'll exit the camera view and do the exact same process that I did before, except it'll be on this side this time. Go over here, make sure these little corners at the edge of what we just extruded are also shift selected. Keep going around here, these ones. So now you can see when you go up here, all of these are selected once again, all of them going in the same direction. And I'm going to go back down to where I have one selected E to extrude, get that to a nice subtle width there. And then once again, click baseboard and then assign so that these all have the right color. Now we're down to the final side. So deselect everything you had before and then select, select, and then make sure again <laughs> to hit these little corners. It's kind of difficult and annoying, but it helps the look a lot. And just like you did before, E to extrude to a nice width, click baseboard and then click assign. And now when I go to my camera and shift tilde tab, you can see that when I walk around, these baseboards are nice and even along each of the sides and they're covering all of the sides. And it provides a really nice contrast between the wall and the floor because when dark things are between the wall and the floor it makes it look a lot more realistic if it's just flat and it's a cube it doesn't look as realistic at all this is looking quite nice already so now i'm going to start texturing the walls and the carpet for the walls i'm going to click on the walls material go down here to base color where it has this little yellow dot click that and click image texture. Now I have this option to open up an image from my computer and make it into the image texture. And I'm going to bring over this texture that I made using mid journey. Um, and it's this nice yellow wallpaper and you can use this for free. It's on my discord channel right now. As long as you credit me as the creator, you can use this absolutely for free and you can download it from that discord server. So I'm going to click this and find this file. Here it is. I'm going to click on it and click open image. And now you're going to see that it looks really weird on the walls. You don't want that. So I'm going to exit the camera view and with this structure cube still selected and in edit mode, I'm going to select the face selection option and click A. And that is going to select all of my faces. Now I'm going to go up here to UV, click smart UV project, and click OK. And now all of the textures are distributed evenly along the walls, although they're way too big. So now I'm going to go to shading, go back to the camera so that I can see this view that I'm at. And down here, I've got my nodes for this material. I'm going to click on this orange image texture node right here and click control T. And that is going to add a texture coordinate and mapping node to the end of this image texture. Now I can scale down this texture. And since this texture is tileable, that means that whenever I scale it down, it's going to perfectly merge with the next tile over. So it works perfectly. So with this scale option, I'm going to scale it way down. Let's say to negative 11. I'm going to click on the Y here and negative 11 there as well. And now it's looking a lot better, a lot more like walls would. When I go back to layout, shift tilde and tab, 
I walk around, those are some nice looking walls. And you can play around with what you want your walls to look like. Sometimes it looks nice to have a texture like this where you can see definitive lines, or sometimes it's nice to have blank walls. It just depends on the look you're going for. And now I'm gonna do the same process for the carpet. So I'm going to left click to exit out of this, click the camera icon to get out of here, and now I'm going to use the same axis system here and click the negative Z at the bottom. So now I'm looking at the bottom of my structure and still in edit mode, I'm going to shift select all of these floor planes right here, get those all selected. I'm going to add a new material here, name it carpet and click assign. So now when I go back to my camera view, I can see that the whole carpet is the white default color. I'm gonna do the same thing, go down to base color with this yellow dot, change that to image texture, and open up my carpet file down here. Open that up. And again, it's scaled up way too much. So I'm gonna go back to shading, make sure to have that carpet selected. Click the image texture node, control T to add that mapping node to it. Zoom in here, and now you can scale it all the way down to whatever you want. I'm gonna go to negative 35.5, shift tilde tab to check it out. No, that's actually quite nice. It's like a fine grain carpet. Now I'm gonna start working on the lights, and light is the most important factor in making your backroom's environment look realistic. So in order to do lights effectively, I need to see what my final scene is gonna look like. So now it is time to configure all of the render settings and all of the other aspects that we need to put together. So I'm going to left click to exit this mode and go over here to the scene tab. I'm gonna click my render engine and change it to cycles. You can do things on Eevee, but it makes it usually a lot more realistic when you can do it on cycles. Change your device from CPU to GPU compute, and then change max samples under viewport to 10. Now this is a very important step. Under render settings, you wanna change your max samples to somewhere around 300 to 400. You do not wanna leave it at 4096 or else it will take 100 years to render your animation and you don't want that. Make sure to have denoise checked and then come down here to motion blur and check that. Now I'm going to go down to format and in this resolution page, I'm going to change this to 640 by 480 pixels. This makes it kind of low quality and VHS filter style, but if you want to make it 1080p like I did with my newest animation in some parts, you can change it to 1000 by 563. Those are the dimensions I rendered it under. It's basically a scaled down version of 1080p. If your computer can handle it, you can set these to 1920 by 1080, uh, but I like to keep it 640 by 480 because my computer can manage that pretty well. 24 frames per second is also a good idea because it helps with that VHS look. Once I've got all of my cycles render settings set up, I'm gonna start working on the lights. Now, in a lot of Backrooms videos, you'll see this hanging ceiling look, which is very reminiscent of Kane Pixel's original video. But in this one, I'm gonna stick to the style I had in the found footage segment of my newest Backrooms animation, where it's got these more hotel looking lights, which I think looked really good. So I'm going to exit out of object mode and shift right click to put my 3D cursor right there on the ceiling, then shift A to add a cylinder from the mesh tab. And I can open up this little window here and change the vertices to let's say 50 to make it smoother. Now I'm gonna press X to scale this down to around this size, light, circular light size, whatever you'd like that size to be, that's pretty good. Um, and now SZ to scale it down. I can also click period on the number pad with this cylinder selected to zoom in the camera on that. So when you're working on something specific, you can zoom in using that method. I'm now gonna go into edit mode with this cylinder selected, select this big face here with the face select mode enabled. And now with this face selected, I'll click I, which is going to make a new inset face in this object. And I'm gonna bring it into around here and then extrude and drag up a little bit to bring this face up. Now I'm gonna go into my materials tab, add a new material, name it light main, and then add another material and name it light glow. And I'm going to go ahead and assign that to this face. So have this face selected and click assign. On this light glow material, I'm going to change the surface from principal BSDF to emission 
and make this emission value a value of 10 to start. I'm also going to change this light main color to one that better matches the rest of the ceiling. After that, I can go back into my camera, shift tilde tab, so that I'm in the camera view as usual. And I can find where I put this little light here. Then I'll go up here to the viewport shading option and click that. Now you can see it's generating light, but not a whole lot. So maybe I will go back here to the light glow and change it to 20. I'm gonna exit the render preview and go to the material preview, exit the camera. And now with this selected, I'm gonna press Shift D, click, and then G Shift Z. And that's gonna move it along the X and Y axis, just like I like it. So G Shift Z, bring it over here, and you can move up here to the top view and kind of place these where you'd like. So Shift D, click G shift Z bring it over here shift D click G shift Z bring it over here shift D G shift Z now when I go back into the camera and go to this render preview there's more light in here I'm gonna shift tilde tab and kind of look around you can see that there's definitely more light but we maybe want to have a little bit more you can change this based on the amount of lights in your scene and how you want your room to look it looks like 60 emission strength looks really good for my scene so now i'm going to render a test image i'm going to go up here to the second scene tab from the top and go down here to where it has the format options i'm going to make sure that i have png selected and color depth of 16 and then I'll select my output folder here. Now I'm gonna go up here to render and render image. You can see that this is gonna take around a minute and a half to two minutes to render. And I've found that each of my frames usually takes three to five minutes to render in a big project. So this is what the scene looks like right now. And it looks okay. This carpet is a little too emissive. It's a little too specular. It kind of reflects the light in a very squishy way. I don't like how that looks. So what I'm gonna do is exit out of this and click on my cube, my main cube that has this whole structure included and go back to the material window, go to the carpet, and go down here to specular and turn that down and then turn the roughness a little bit up because carpets don't really glow like they're jello. It also helps when you're doing these projects to stay organized. As you can see, I have not done a great job of that. So I'm gonna right click on the scene collection bin and click new collection. This one will be for lights. And so I'll delete this light that was in the scene before. We don't need that. Um, and then click one of these shift select all of the cylinders and bring them into light. Now I can click this arrow on the side and kind of hide all of those. You can obviously add a lot more to this scene using the methods that I've shown you and add different objects and a ceiling texture if you want to do that. But for right now, I'm just going to add one more thing to enhance the realism of this scene and that is ceiling sprinklers. I'll exit out of my camera using this button and then shift right click to add the 3D cursor to the ceiling. Then I'm gonna press shift A, mesh, and then another cylinder. Uh, which will have the amount of vertices that you set last time. I'm gonna scale that way down to around there. GZ to move down a little bit and SZ if you wanna make it any longer. So now with this selected, I'm gonna go to edit mode, select a loop cut and then click and drag to around here and then S to scale this down so it kind of makes a semi hourglass looking shape. And now I'll go around with the select tool and the face selection mode and shift select three of these faces at a time, right click, delete faces. Go around some more, oh yeah, and once again, back to object mode, you can click the period on the number pad on your keyboard to focus on the object. So now instead of moving around weirdly, it's focused on the object. So back in edit mode, I've taken out three faces, I'll leave three, I'll take three, I'll leave three, and again, this is dependent on how many vertices you put on your cylinder, um, but just as long as there are kind of equal parts open and closed, so it looks like a sprinkler. And what I like to do for the sake of detail is click on the vertex select mode and then click the x-ray option here and then kind of come up to the side and select all of the vertices on this layer. So all of those around the circle are selected right click new edge face from vertices. So now it's closed up, it's not showing the ceiling through it. And I'm gonna do the same here with these ones, right click new edge face from vertices. 
now it's looking a lot nicer. Now I'm gonna select this bottom row of vertices here, scale it down a bit, GZ, kind of make it a little bit more realistic, there we go. Then back to object mode, and it's looking very nice, especially if we zoom out a bit. Now I'll select this, add a new material, name it Sprinkler, change the base color to a dark brown color, kind of around here. There we go, that looks nice in the scene. And now I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the lights. I'm gonna come up here, Shift D, click G, Shift Z, move these around a bit. And you can turn on this option, the solid mode, to see through where you're going and kind of see where you're placing these things. Now when you go back to your camera in material preview mode and then Shift till they tap, you can walk around and, oh wow, little sprinklers on the roof. That adds a lot of realism to the scene I found. Um, it just looks like a ceiling would, because ceilings usually aren't just blank. And I actually want some of these corners to be dark for the sake of the final render, so I'm going to delete this light, shift tilde tab, keep moving around. This light I can get rid of, like so and it's starting to come together. So now I'm gonna start creating my camera motion. The first thing I'm gonna do is select this auto keying button down here by the timeline. And now with my camera selected and while I'm in this viewport, I'm gonna click G and then left click and that's gonna make a keyframe here down at the timeline. Now if I bring this slider all the way to the end of my animation, click out of the camera button, click the transparency option and then G shift Z, I can move this camera to the final part of where it's going. And now it's gonna add a new keyframe and then you can see it kind of moves through the scene. When I go back to the camera view and to the material preview, you can see that this camera is walking through the scene, but it doesn't look very realistic. Now comes the fun part where we generate artificial camera shake within the Blender window. So Nick Cotman made a tutorial on how to get realistic camera shake in Blender, and this is how he did it. First we go to GitHub through the link in the description that I'll put in there, and you've got this camera shakeify add-on, which is free and I've been using it for a very long time for my own projects. If you go to code, then download zip, you can download the file. Now when I'm back in the Blender window, I can go to edit, preferences, add-ons, and click install up here. Wherever your zip file is with the camera shakeify add-on, you click on that and then click install add-on. Once you've done that, you can go back here to the add-ons page and search for camera Shakeify, and you can click that box to enable it. Once you've done all that, if you have the camera object selected, you can go down here and there's a camera Shakeify section, and I'm going to expand that. And if I click this plus button, I've immediately got a new Shakeify profile. You'll have investigation selected by default, so now when you press play, you can see it's got this really nice organic shake to it. You can change this shake mode to whatever you want, if you want the spaceship shake, it's like that. If you want the bike on gravel, it's like that. If you want the close-up, looks like that. You can change all of these ones, but for just walking through the back rooms, Investigation is a really cool found footage-esque camera shake. A great final touch would be to go here to the Compositing tab, select Use Nodes so that your nodes are visible, and then click Add Glare and you're gonna bring this down here and click it in the middle so that it goes in the middle. You can add another node, that being the viewer node, so you can see what you're working with, and then click on this yellow dot by image and drag it down to viewer. The default glare is really ugly. It's just these massive streaks in the middle of your footage. What you can do is change that to fog glow, and you can change this size to your heart's content. Um, oftentimes, if you have a negative 0.3 mix, in a size seven or eight, it works the best. You can of course render another test image to see how your scene is coming together. That I think looks really nice. For the amount of time we put into creating this scene, it looks quite good. I'm gonna go back here to the format section of my render settings. And since we're rendering as individual PNG frames, if your computer dies in the middle of rendering or there's some other glitch in the system, you won't lose your progress. So now with my frame start and end set, I'm going to go up here to render, 
and click render animation. All right, after Blender is done rendering the animation, all of my finished frames are in my output folder. Now we're gonna move to the final visual step, which is turning this video into a VHS found footage style video. I'm using this VHS effect by BGVC on YouTube. It's free to use as long as you credit him, and I linked his tutorial in the description so that you can get a more detailed rundown on how to get this effect started. To start, I'm gonna save my work here, and create a new video editing project. Once I'm in this video editing tab, I'm gonna change my resolution to 640 by 480, which is the same as our project was. And then I'm gonna go down here to the timeline and click Shift A, and then click image slash sequence. And when I click that, it's gonna let me find my frames file. So I found it right here, and you can see all of my frames are in this folder. I'm gonna click the first one, scroll down, and shift select the last picture so that all of them are selected. And then I'm gonna click add image strip. You can see that my end frame in the project comes a little bit before the end frame of the video. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase the end frame a little bit, and I can zoom in here to make sure I get it exactly right. Bring it back here, there we go. Now with that end frame set correctly, I'll go up here to the Workspaces tab and click this plus button, go to General, and then Compositing. First thing I'll do is select Use Nodes, then I'll select this Render Layers node, X to delete, then I'll add a Movie node with Shift A, search for Movie Clip, put that there, and then connect this to the Composite node. I'll click Open File, and here I'm going to find where my Frames folder is, so it's right here. I'm going to do the same thing, select the first frame, go down to the bottom, select the last frame with Shift, and click Open Clip. Then I'll also add a Viewer node with Shift A, Viewer and then drag this image down here. Now once I've done that, I'm going to add the VHS effect from BGVC. So you can download his effect from the description of his tutorial. I'm gonna go ahead and extract this. Once you've done that, you should have this VHS 23 folder in your downloads file or wherever you extracted it to. And I'm gonna go back to my Blender window, click File, Append, and then find that exact folder. Click on this folder, then open up the project. Then go down here to node tree and then click this VHS FX file and click append. Now when I click shift A to add and go down to group, I can see this VHS FX node. And I'm gonna click on that. Now it is in my node tree. I'm gonna click it in between these two and control right click to cancel this out. Bring this image node down here to viewer, and there we go, the effect is applied. Now obviously you can adjust each of these settings to your liking and figure out what each one does individually, but to start I'm gonna put in some settings that worked well for me. Point 0.1 for color streaks, point 0.3 for color loss, point 0.1 for color noise, 1.1 for color blur amount, 1.7 for distort factor, Luma Blend, zero. Luma Bleed, zero. And you can change those if you want your color to be significantly shifted. And then Sharpen to 0.5. Now when I play that video, it's quite nice and it, it has these nice VHS red edges over here. Once you've set these to your liking, you can make sure your frame rate is the same as your original project. Mine was 24, so I'm gonna leave it at that. And I like to change the file format to AVI JPEG, so it actually exports as a video instead of the frames. You can obviously export as PNG again if you'd like, um, but I like doing AVI JPEG for this step. Once I've set my export folder, I'll do the same thing, go up here to render and click render animation. Now when that's done rendering, we finally have our final product. When I click on this file, I can play it and see, and there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and maybe learned a thing or two from it. Obviously, this is the baseline of what you can do in Blender. You can add so many more things to this animation once you get more fluent with the language of 3D animation. But I hope this video gave you a good head start in being able to create your project ideas. If you like this video, I have a bunch of other tutorials around the backrooms in Blender that you might enjoy. And I also have full-length backrooms animations where I use these methods to create a full-length project. So if you want to see how far these methods can go, you can definitely check those out. But yeah, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you later. Snoiky out.